happy birthday. It was uh, just a week or two ago. Two? One? No, just one week, man. Just Come one on, week. dude. Come on. Man. Come on, dude. <laughs> I know I'm getting older, but shit. <laughs> Time just starts flying faster when you get older. <laughs> Time waits for no man or woman. No. We won't guess your age, but again, these uh, these sort of trinkets are probably going to date it pretty easily. Yes, I think it is. I mean, people, we got the audience are very smart. They could guess how old I would be. I am. <laughs> You know, after we talk about this right here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome back to the Rocket Blast podcast. Uh, my name's Dakota, and this is my friend Amos from the Just Being Amos podcast. And uh, we're going to be talking today a little more in depth about the G.I. Joe Real American Hero line. So, a little brief shout out to these guys, these originals. They're right, the originals, the OGs. <laughs> I apologize. One is a naturalist. The other is oh. <laughs> complete opposite. He's terrified of everything. This guy right here. <laughs> wow, man. He's pretty there's great. A, there's a spitting image here. Of, of who? Uh, <laughs> of who? Oh, that's supposed to be me? <laughs> what are glasses, dude? In the future, no one needs glasses. Oh, my they God. They just have to put the hood on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. So... 1964, I believe, is when this all starts. See, there you go. Playing. <laughs> we got to play with the toys right out of the gate. I'm sorry. I'm going to put Harold the Naturalist away, and we'll put Luke and uh, Cobra up for visual comparisons. And here. leave my doppelganger right there. I'll leave the doppelganger there. Okay. All right. So 1964, we've got 12-inch figures from Hasbro. They're a little cumbersome. As you see, they fall over and knock shit around. Right, right. <laughs> but, the, but, <laughs> right. The, but the kids enjoyed them. Um, I mean, what's amazing to me is they had accessories for these things. Thinking about something that size fitting into a Jeep. So now you've got Jeeps. Oh, right, right. This big. Right. Like everything of theirs is going to be oversized. And Did you ever own one? No. No, I, I, I never did. I didn't either. I, I've, I'm trying to think if I had... I had a I had relatives I guess that was like oh yeah there's an original GI Joe I can't play with that that's huge and it's probably expensive or something so well, yeah I yeah. was never allowed to, to you know mess with that um, I think a, th a friend of ours uh, he he I think he received some from like his father some people were in the military kind of thing and I think that was the same thing with my situation I think it was a you know like a grandfather was in World War II and so you know some of those figures and stuff was kind of uh, right. in the household as a, a a boy's doll or the action figure as they they called it. <laughs> yes, it's an action figure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it still has some pretty fun accessories. I mean, man, would you put that thing back <laughs> on his head, man? <laughs> Don't worry, he's not stripping down. He's Good. just he's just warm. So uh, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, just stay I just, there. I just have to play with these things. All right, so. <laughs> But they did have a lot of accessories to the point where I think that's the excitement of that era where, you know, they didn't have really name, you know, recognition. They, they, they have no recognition. There was no code name or nothing. Right. It was just the infantry, right, man? Just the Marine. Marine, yeah. Uh, astronaut, I think, sailor. Yeah. No code uh, names whatsoever. And as we were recently informed, uh, one of the more rare figures when it comes to collect uh, collectibles now is the nurse. The ner right, 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 one the nurse. The, one of the only female original Joes. Hello, nurse, <laughs> if y'all don't know. <laughs> You know, I mean, I guess it's good that they uh, that they got the women in there and the right. first 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 strike, but obviously that really comes into a fruition a little bit later here. But seventies things start to taper off a little bit when it comes to the war themes. It becomes more bionic man inspired, a lot oh, of action, right. adventure. Uh, action man is uh, is the British uh, take on GI Joe. Right, right, right. Uh, I forgot about the bionic man. Yeah, yeah, and and those those got figures if I'm not mistaken as well. Mm -hmm. But Hasbro wanted to try and get those rights, but they didn't. I don't right. think they were able to. So uh, so there's definitely some inspiration there for uh, for the line, and I think they started to try in the '70s to to start having like Bullet Man and different like named characters, but it just didn't just didn't quite didn't take click. Off. Yeah. yeah, didn't click. So it really doesn't start. I mean, as far as 
our time, our era, which is the real American hero stuff until about 1982. So you've got... <laughs> now, now people got to guess our age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe I'm alive at this time, maybe I'm not. I am playing with these this line of figures. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, real American hero. So the 70s tapering off, the popularity popularity is really starting to kind of dwindle a little bit from these 12 inch figures um and the popularity of some other figures are starting to pop up yo that's right i think it's um star wars right mm, yeah a little movie a little movie called star wars guys 1977 yeah yeah which they didn't get their toys right away no so everybody was a little disappointed with that but really i don't think anybody had licensed these kinds of things like george lucas did with those movies no so you don't really get any of this kind of stuff if you don't have Star Wars. That is true. But this just innovates when it comes to the way that they uh, advertised, I guess, marketed these things, yes. got them into the homes. Uh, so, yeah, 1982, the, the legend has it. <laughs> well, he said the legend, right? The legend has it. I've heard I've heard mixed stories about this, but the legend goes that uh, Jim Shooter, according to Jim Shooter, which by the way was the editor in chief in Marvel, yes, at the at that time, at the time, right, and he had already been working with other toy properties, different toy lines, yes, so they were they were having some success with that already, I believe, but I guess it was at a charity where the president of Marvel Comics. And the CEO of Hasbro shared a bathroom visit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, legend says. As legend says. And uh, one uh, of Hasbro's CEOs lamenting uh, to Marvel's president that, yeah, there's just we're not getting these back off the ground, it doesn't seem. These G.I. Joes, uh, mm -hmm. they had their, their time and they were wondering you know, what they were going to be doing. And I think uh, Jim Shooter's the editor-in-chief. And yeah. so whoever, the president was basically saying, look, we've got a creative bullpen that can knock this out of the park. Mm -hmm. You need to let us handle this. And true to form, Jim oh. Shooter put put uh, Larry Hama on task. Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> he put him on task. And you know, I've I've heard mixed things. I've heard I've heard uh, Larry Hama say that if this was Barbie, he he would have taken it. Uh, if it was whatever it was, he said he would have done his best to write that as best as he could. But I've also heard that there was already something brewing creatively with regards to Larry Hama coming at, up with some military base. But he served in the military, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yep. And so his 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 you know that that interest was there, but he said he never really set out to make military comics. Right. Which kind of makes sense because when you when you go back and you look at the comics yeah that's in there that's a part of it for sure when it comes to the characters and all of that but there's there's definitely a lot of like family clan battles in terms of ninja society yeah, there's, right. there's, there's all sorts of things going on so right. it's he you know a lot more pop culture in the 80s ninjas were very popular i don't oh, know how to express that to you all if you weren't there <laughs> american ninja american ninja you remember what was, that what was the tv show oh was that a tv show about it but i know it was a movie no i remember american ninja the movie there was a, an ongoing show with uh van cleef uh as the the mentor the sensei the wow. angel eyes from uh uh the good the bad and the ugly oh, my goodness i mean they had vigilante motorcyclists uh, Night Rider, Street Hawk, the, the, the all Street Hawk, yeah. Oh, I mean, this real. the eighties just exuded cheese, but in a good way. Oh, it was a good cheese, mo. <laughs> it was a good cheese. Yeah, it was a good cheese. <laughs> we are guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of eighties and good cheese, that connects directly with GI Joe, Mega Force. For anyone who hasn't seen it, yes, may it's just be. Chuck Norris, right? No, no. You think that because of that beard right. and because of the bandana. Right, 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 right. It's, it's not Chuck. Oh, no. You're thinking Delta Force. Oh, that's right. Delta Force. But these things all do play a part in the pop culture. It's like 
adults are watching Chuck Norris save his POW friends in Delta Force. Yeah, yes, yes. Slightly younger are watching flying motorcycles in Megaforce. Sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's almost mask at, at that point. Like the, the, the action figures are just built right into some of these silly creations. And Larry oh, Hama right. had the whole landscape figured out. I mean, all those those flavors are in there. So you get the, the, the biker gangs, which, you know, for whatever reason, that was something in the 80s we were Yeah, the biker gangs. Just... <laughs> yeah, then you said the ninja thing was going on Ninjas. in the 80s. Martial art in itself. Yeah. It up in the late 70s and the early 80s. I mean, Karate Kid. And Karate Kid, right. So that was another factor, too. And just the explosion that Star Wars set out, and that was Kenner. That's Kenner inspired Hasbro to go with these 3.75 inch figures mm -hmm. down from this. I mean, that's, that's crazy. They're saving so much money. Right. <laughs> but, right out of the gate. So with that height and that they shrunk it down to 3.75, but for GI Joe, the posability. Oh yeah. It's the difference. Even yeah. In comparison to Luke here, yeah, it's just up straight up and down. Yeah. It's just one most. Yeah. Yeah. With that, that actually had like a, a like a band inside of it yeah. to make it twist around. Yep. Yeah. So look at that. I mean, the articulation on these was a lot of fun. Yes. And 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 the characters are just very colorful. I mean, this is this is a uh, this is supposed to be the supreme terrorist of of the bad guys. Right. And he's just looking super fresh. I mean, he's just he's, he's super fresh. He's dope. He's, he's dope. <laughs> fresh to death. <laughs> <laughs> but so Larry Hama. Marvel Comics get to work. They have to create backstories. Yes. In the, some cases, names. The code uh, names, right? The the all the little uh, uh, back cards for these figures. The file file cards. Yeah, the file yeah. cards. Which we've got we've got some here over here in the collecting the art of GI Joe and the toy guide. Here we're looking through some of these earlier, and it's just crazy to see the the original box art for the Joes and for the Transformers in mm -hmm. that 83, 84 era or whatever. It's just so sweet. It's just so slick. It is. It um, is. Whether it's the, the sunbursts or whether it's the uh, 80s grids, the neon grids. Oh, like. right, right, right. <laughs> right. But... Uh, yeah, I wonder who was the artist that did the, the covers. I mean... They didn't, they kept one of the different artists was the same artist. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure when it comes to those that the box, box art sort of, itself. Yeah. I mean, I guess we could uh, preview sure, this here. Look through that. Yeah, we can that here in a second. We can. But I know uh, Ron Rudat um, is the one who had designed the Cobra insignia. Right. And I think he was also it was almost motorcycle leather mustache. neck. Leather neck, yes. So uh, I believe they based him on that artist. So like a lot of, you know, they get their little, you know, their little insertions there when it comes to the people went into this, the creators of these. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of. Uh, oh, I gotta love the eighty mustache, dude. Uh, handlebar mustache. <laughs> so the toy line doesn't come out right away. They 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 prep the kids with comic books, of course. And what's great about that is they get around laws at the time that were to prevent advertising toward to kids, to children. And the way they were able to do this is by advertising instead of toys, they yeah. advertise comic books, which hadn't been done. And apparently they decided is not worth doing ever again because... All these gigantic film properties could be advertising this. If you're going to make a, a billion dollar, you know, franchise out of these things, you probably... Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. This is really cool, man. The old treasury edition. Yeah. You should probably show, uh, you know, where it all comes from and entice uh, new readers and new collectors. But, <laughs> alas, that was something that they only thought to do in 1982 onwards for a bit. And it worked very well. So the commercials for these uh, were just as well produced uh, as the show. Yeah. But they were very short, very brief. Mm -hmm. Same, A lot of the same voice actors, I think, are already in place. Um, and the excitement is already there. This, at some point, during the 80s, there was a time when G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, was outselling 
uh, Uncanny X Men and uh, like all of the popular but like this Spider Man and Uncanny X Men. Yeah. The the Flash was most of the iconic um, yeah. superheroes. Yeah, comic books, and I, Marvel. This the, and and this set off quite a lot. Now I'm not sure when you'll have to inform inform us on uh, you know on the Transformers one, but I'm not sure when Transformers starts hitting the comics. If it's a year or two later after these, but I remember one of the things they did pretty quickly was the synergy of having G.I. Joe and Transformers yeah, right out of the gate. the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'd almost, we won't talk too much about the live action films, but no. <laughs> no. I think that could have helped G.I. Joe's case if they had introduced a special military team in the Transformers movie. Yeah. Just something to show, oh, okay, there's more to this. That way they would have known right out of the gate. But apparently only Marvel was aware to do something like that. Yes. <laughs> so yes. back to Marvel, though, they they had a very successful comic book on their hands. And it wasn't until, I want to say it was around fall of that year that the toys start coming out in 82. So in 82, we've got, let's see here. Yeah, I think this is the, the first lineup. We've got uh, everyone from uh, Stalker. You got the Grunt, Flash, Hawk, Rock and Roll, uh, Breaker. You got so many well-known characters like Scarlet and, of course, Cobra Commander, right. Snake Eyes. Um, you know, you've got... It was, it was no Duke? Yes, I am. Yeah, he's in 83. So, okay. He's huh. in 83. Interesting. All right. So, a lot of this is uh, inspired in part by, you know, some knowledge of the military and such from Larry Hama, but it's not the main, main focus. This no. is, is going to be a lot more geared towards uh, to like a club or a tribe like it's like you're you're a member of the club you know so it really felt more like that like you know members only jackets were big back I'm then. not the members only jacket and I was convinced that I was a part of something <laughs> 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 it was all about inclusion and feeling like you belong yeah <laughs> yeah and I mean right out of the gate they do have a pretty good mixed you know group it's of people diverse. Yeah, it's it a is diverse a diverse group, group. Due to the success of things like Micronauts at 3.75, the Star Wars figures at 3.75, these things start getting advertised in the fall by just Christmas. In, just by Christmas time, ready to get some G.I. Joe's. Yeah, yeah. And it blows up like gangbusters. I think they projected in their first year 15 million. I think they were shooting for, hoping yeah. for, and they made about they, 50. They surpassed that, man. Oh, it yeah. was, come on, man. Yeah, it. It, it it took them by surprise, I'm sure. Right. The commercials were so popular, they and they knew this would happen. I'm sure they knew this would happen. This is the whole plan. They became shows. Of course. And that started with five episode so, miniseries. Miniseries, yeah, five episode miniseries. Yeah. What was that first one? The first, the first one was um, the Mass Device. Okay. Yeah. Right. And you had mentioned how, uh, I guess, uh, in the cartoon, Baroness is wearing blue. Blue, this, this, right. This yeah. particular color blue is very popular at that first uh, in that first season. Yeah, it's that or that first, first miniseries, I guess. Matter of fact, she's blue in that comic. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I just looked at it. She actually had the blue outfit in that comic book. Okay, yeah. So that kind of makes sense when they did the first miniseries, I guess. And this is her, uh, Trimpy? Of course, in the comics, they have to draw, bl they have to have, like Snake Eyes is in blue because it's black. black it's right. Superman's hair. Right. That whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, they didn't quite have the level of oh no palette there no, no. for that yet. So so like you said, the toy line came out. Then after the toy line, we have comic in June, June of eighty two, toy line in the fall. fall. Then eighty three, we get the show. The show. So we get the mini series. Oh, Cobra make this big device and. They got to get the minerals and elements and stuff. It was hella. It was thinking about it now as an adult. I mean, it didn't make no sense. But as a kid, it didn't really give a damn. <laughs> minerals and resources, resources, even in the Transformers, like that was what they they like. Kids will get that gist of this. Like, yeah, they won't understand fossil fuels or like none of that. No, or the water. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, who, we kids don't know. Come on. <laughs> Mineral rich uh, land. I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, I had to go back and watch those episodes, man. Well, I remember the my first viewing to date me seriously of the Joe cartoons and the Transformers was on Betamax. Ooh, I just remember. Oh man, <laughs> it was it was a very small small town, uh, Ma and Pa. You know, 
video rental store and one must have been one of the su- the earliest cuz for our audience VHS <laughs> yes it's called a video cassette tape <laughs> I'm sure those giant Disney uh puffy boxes still exist all over the place. Oh, Everybody man. knows what those things are. But you know, <laughs> that's the thing. So these tangible physical things is really kind of what most of this gets back to. So for right now we were talking about like, okay, where can we watch these cartoons? Oh, right. it's on Tubi or oh it's streaming here, it's streaming there. But there was a time when you know, if you wanted to watch these things and not just wait until it was on television, you had to big old oh, it was size huge. of a book it was huge on your shelf yeah, yeah really and uh and it took forever yeah. for those tapes to come oh yeah yeah forever because yeah. i don't i don't think a lot of people in, in the the early early 80s were, were buying those to they, they were too expensive yeah way too expensive yeah. so yeah that was 83 the first five episodes i want to mm-hmm. say yeah the first five episodes so that was uh, done almost like as a as a each day of the week uh special thing um, wasn't, I don't, I don't, you know, one thing I'm uncertain of is if they were ever a full, full part of the Saturday morning cartoon lineups. They, to me, cause was, how did you watch? I them? watched it as a kid. It was, um, always after school. It was never Saturday yep. morning. Yeah. Cause I think when I, when I watched it on WGN, it was out of Chicago. Yep. WGN. Yeah. And so yeah. I didn't watch it on Saturday morning cartoon. It was always in the afternoon after school. Right after you got home. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't do no homework, but I went straight to see GI Joe. That little, <laughs> that little time, time difference between, uh, the East coast and Chicago. Not, right. I wonder if that, did that affect you though? If you would have been, was that the same time zone? No, um, from the side, that's central. So, okay, so it yeah. was the same time zone. Yeah, the WGM was the same time zone. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, it was the same time zone. So see, I got I had like a little hour to sort of like get my stuff to oh, ready. Oh, yeah, and get all, right. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they did the miniseries, and it was the second miniseries, right? Yes. So the, it, again, it's not that it wasn't popular enough. I think it was just, you start to see this repeating theme for a second of these five episode, you know, minis. That build, build to, right. to but, the thing. But if they did the mini, right? But the toys were very popular still. Yeah, they were just getting more popular. But getting more popular. So, in fact, what year did we say was probably the, like, not to be too snobbish because everyone will have a different opinion. Right. But was it 84, 85? The, the best year, I think, it was. We're kind of debating. Yeah. It's that one there right there. Go. There's this one right here. Yeah. It's this one. 84 and 85, right. Cause this is now. Let's see here. We were talking about eighty three. Eighty three had Duke. Eighty three had Destro. Mm-hmm. Eighty three uh, gets Cover Girl. Um, eighty three really starts to. I mean, the characters start getting way more colorful, way more unique, way mm-hmm. more like, you know, the first generation of these had uh, Grunt, right? Grunt. Infantry. You know, like the a little bit more generic. But once we get to this to eighty four and then to eighty five, yeah. We have a character that's called Quick Kick. Yep, Quick Kick. Learned yeah. a, learned a lot of his English through watching television, yeah. I believe. Hollywood. 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 Yeah yeah yeah, 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 Hollywood. Then you have Shipwreck. He's a sailor. Yeah. Well, Polly. You know, it was very colorful, who can, man. <laughs> who can forget Shipwreck? Right. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, you got the dreadnoughts. Yeah, let's yeah. show let's show some of this card art because this was just beautiful. So this was uh, Snake Eyes and uh, Timber. Timber Wolf. Timber, yeah. Um. Like got I said, you gotta have shipwreck right there. Yeah, Polly. So this is this at this point you got Tomax and Zayma, the Dreadnoughts. You've got the really pretty much enough characters. Where yeah, it's enough. You don't need more than these, but they kept pumping them they, out. They kept coming, man. Did it come out to a uh, five hundred figures in all of for the real American hero? Wow, that's a lot, man. I want to say it was five hundred figures. So all of this is up for it's up for debate if Larry Hama had some of this already prepared as a post shield related Marvel pitch. Right, 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 right. There's, right. there's been some talk about the, that he might have had these sort of already uh, some of this this idea in his head. It would have been Hydra, but instead I think it was Archie Goodwin Archie who Goodwin. came up with right. Cobra, Cobra, Cobra Commander. Right. So they knew that they needed some kind of foil. They knew that they needed uh, a, a villain for the show. Right. And so. They went right to work. They got all that, you know, pretty pretty well done. And I love the the little conceit of Cobra Commander being the the ultimate flashy terrorist, international terrorist. But he <laughs> starts as a used car salesman. 
Y- yes, in the comic books, right? In the comics. All okay, right. yeah. I think that's where they, they first touched on that. Because I don't, I don't remember if they ever really touched on that in the cartoon show. No, they didn't. He, because he never knew his background in the cartoons. Yeah. No, he's just a terrorist, the leader of a terrorist organization. Yeah. That's yeah. all you know. Yeah. yeah. E- even even something like Destro being a, a weapons dealer, sort You're of right. advanced for kids to, to quite I, wrap their heads around. I like, didn't know. I'm be honest. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't understand what I didn't that understand even is. Yeah. And, 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 and we were we were around during a time like the Iran Contra scandal. Right. And all of that kind of stuff. So it's like all of this is periphery. We don't know what the realities are of it because destro is short for destruction this, this is destroy i would right? think destroy yeah, destroy destro. right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i mean i mean that's something too i think you know it plays into the 70s uh dipping into the more sports and action and adventure and the bionic stuff and all of that because you know the the vietnam war obviously started in the 60s but it really starts getting a lot of public attention in the seventies. And once it starts getting that public attention, the, the, the public's taste for maybe the, mm. the war elements of toys and such. Right. For kids, they start to, mm, you know, maybe not. So they, but you know what I think with GI Joe, I, I, um, it came out at the right time. Yeah. You know, during the eighties, the, the cold war, the cold the, war the, was still there. It was still cold though. So, yeah. you know, like things, you know, things were popping off in parts of the world. And but Russia and communism. We at the, yeah. So super aware of it. Right. You know, we didn't see a lot of that. So it did come post the end of the Vietnam war. Hadn't, you know, the desert storm wars hadn't started up yet in the nineties. No. So it's 65 episodes makes a syndicated series. I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm not sure if exact, if that's exactly how that works, but, it's so it's five episodes, five episodes. So they needed the first season to be 55, 55 episodes, right? So, which they got 65 instead, right? I think that's just what it all comes, comes to. I think it's just, yeah, okay, I think that's what it came total down to. Total yeah. 65, so, the first season, yeah. So, okay. so that's it's 55 for the first season, and then five and five for those two minis. They just kind of typically so, put that all together, right? Right, right. But the, the series, uh, the season does start with a five episode mini basically the same way the first two were oh yeah the second season, so it's very right. yeah it's a little it's a little confusing as a kid you just kind of whatever you give yeah because we were just I'll, talking yeah. about that how yeah. they just did i mean it was a series but in the first the first episode was a five parter into the second yeah. season. yep yep it, yeah, and, the, and and they did that a lot. They did like a we lot, talked right. about that. I think Rise of Serpentor was, was also them, multi-parts. Yeah. You have five-parters, two-parters. So when the movie comes out in 87, I'm already used to the fact that we get these in chunks. We get yeah. these in little increments. Like yeah. a, a, a one episode, like a, a G.I. Joe episode that's just one episode was a treat. Because like, okay, one and done. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to watch it you know, tomorrow. Right, or keep right, watching. right, right. So... That was always cool, but it definitely threw me off in terms of when the first season was, because I remember I'd be watching, and if my eyes would watch for certain characters, and if I didn't see them there yet, I knew, oh, this is an older one. Yeah. Oh, okay, this one's this, or this one's that. And now it's made a lot more sense, because after 87, they, they, they get a little crazy in the movie. It's fun, but it's crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then they reach this point where I guess – the show does not go back to the original showrunners or the, the showrunner was I mean the production company at being the beginning was Sambo Production and Marvel Production. Yeah. Then it was not and that production company anymore, it was D I C and it takes a remarkable shift. <laughs> oh it was it was not a minor shift. Yeah. It it, it was kinda major. And I had some of the figures, but I do not remember that cartoon show. I'm telling you this right now. I do not as an adult it. as an adult I actually saw some of the episodes, and I'm, I'm I'm scratching my head, and saying, "What is going on?" Yeah, I saw some more recently as well. Yeah, they're and, very comical, they're, right? They're, they're more like slapsticky, and and yeah, this is weird, man. Because like we said in the past, in you know, 84, 85, and you know eighty six. Some you had like one episode that was comedic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they would have little tongue in cheek moments, like I mean, Cold Slither is is fantastic. Cold Slither. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Yo, it's, it's in your head. Oh, you it's know? a catchy tune. It's, it's a catchy, catchy tune, tune man. for sure. <laughs> but you know, so yeah, they definitely after. So I want to say that's '89, the Dick Enterprises shows. So it might be '89. 
so that's that's getting you know near the late 80s yeah 89 to 91 yeah so the popularity is still there but i for the life of me cannot remember their episodes those shows i'm telling you dude i actually watched the episodes and i'm 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 not gonna tell you my age, but I was older. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I don't remember this. And yeah. I started watching this, like, okay, this is directly after the movie. Right after the movie. Right yeah. after the movie. Animation production, the animations, it sucked. I'm sorry, man. It's just the animation. It's, it's rough. Yeah, it's rough. It's, really, it's rough. Um, I mean, it's it's like a DIC yeah. production. <laughs> I'm I can't, I'm sure they put out some good stuff. Did they do Mar- any of the Marvel shows? No, no, I don't think so. Either. No, it's, no it's, I always picture the stars. Yo, that's, I that's, do too, man. Yeah. I, 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 did they do Captain Planet? Oh, mm, did they? I think they did Captain Planet. Well, that's a good tie into when Joe starts to lose, lose popularity. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> because something happens in the early '90s, and again, I think it's a cultural shift. Now, the country is in a, a war. Yeah, people are getting, you know diseases and coming back with ailments and shell shock or ptsd and stuff so it's 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 not really viewed as the realm of of kids stuff but they never take it so serious that they show you the horrors of war right i mean like the cartoon everyone has a parachute (laughs) yeah there's no bullets (laughs) no bullets man it's red and blue lasers, and you will never see someone rent open by one of those lasers. <laughs> never. Never. There's no landmines in the G.I. Joe comics, though there are more serious stuff in the comics probably than even the cartoons. I think it is in the cartoon, yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's something that I think when they know the age range that they're sort of gearing these towards, they probably felt they had to start backing off. So you start getting the eco terrorist and the oh yeah, that's right, ninja force. <laughs> yes, now they're ten Not years late. Not even space now. now. Yeah. <laughs> Ninjas were huge in the eight in the eighties, but nineties they might have missed the boat on this. I think they did. No, because I had one of those eco terrorist figures. I had the one. I had a good guy. I Man, I forgot his name. He had a yellow suit. And yeah. he had a little machine with him and stuff like that. <laughs> I can't remember his name. It's somewhere. It might be in there somewhere. It probably I, is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what it. It would, it would be in the later years, yeah. though. And, and and looking at the later years, I do get confused because I'm like, man, ninety four. Yeah. So here, see, here are some of those. See if any of those ring any bells for you. Now, no. I'll, <laughs> right out of the gate, no. Uh, I. I there was a character that I oh Star Brigade that's what it was Star Brigade yeah that's what the outer space stuff man nope doesn't ring a bell yeah Battle Corpse yeah Core not Corpse, corpse. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a character I remember from GI Joe that was also a real life human being still is <laughs> and his figure. You had to send away to get. Right. Right? You had to send in a certain amount of uh, I, I believe so. UPCs. And, uh, yeah. And when <laughs> the 90s hits, now you've got Desert Storm. And you've got a beloved G.I. Joe character who has gone back to the wrestling. Dude, I'm sorry, man. I'm looking through this book, dude. They got a, a thing called Predacon. That's a, that's, that's a Transformer name. Is that, I'm looking at that right. That looks terrible. Yeah. I wish I could. Well, uh, yeah. Predacon. So, so these are like aliens. Now they're aliens in space, and they're it's like Starship Troopers. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean like yeah, yeah it's kind of what it is. Yes. Yeah, wow. So it shows you that they couldn't really be war serious anymore. Um, Sergeant Slaughter had uh, done a little wrestling promo cut where uh, he's kind of an Iraqi sympathizer. Right. We're talking about so. All of a sudden, now they're losing some of their their heroes in real in the real world. That these not licensed to be in the <laughs> cartoons and the show toys anymore. They lost me. And then this this kind of stuff, yeah. Now, I mean that that cover looks great. It looks nice. That looks like that would be a, an era I'd love you know to to read and but man, pinks, hot pinks, neons, <laughs> uh, mega marines. Yeah, see, I'm saying. Starship Troopers, Ninja mm-hmm. Force, yeah. Star Brigade, like they, these are redonkulous. These look terrible. Well, and, and and this is the point when Kenner, I think, is being handed over these from Hasbro 
and they just all decided, let's just stop. Yeah. Let's just stop for a bit. Nope. Over 500 figures, over 250 vehicles and play sets. Uh, that, that scale stayed true for quite a while. Um, but 94, they just decided, let's, let's put the kibosh in this for a bit. Let's take right. a break. I don't think they did it again till 97. They had a little revival. Yeah, they did. Then they keep having little tiny you know anniversaries and such so i guess the 25th anniversary would have been in 2007 around there um you've got uh a little relaunch i guess 20 in 2002 was it gi joe versus cobra that kind of again it's it's venom of, and valor yeah a lot of that stuff is uh valor in that venom. era i can't it was bad <laughs> and then uh yeah it's just like it, it they're just keep putting out anniversary editions so it shows that now they're not really trying to get new audience, people, new yeah, people new audience. audience. Yeah. So this is becoming slowly through the 2000s a collector's market mm-hmm. now. It's a, yeah. it's it's a collectible. It's no longer about you know the show. The show's gone 94, I believe. By then, uh, the comic is canceled by 94. Yeah. Um. So a lot starts to take place in that time frame, and then they start coming back more and more and it seems like we're seeing a bit of a resurgence with regards to the classifieds the movies didn't do so hot the, the live <laughs> action the live action it just hadn't translated the rise of cobra and retaliation yeah i mean people say the second one's a little bit more like the actual yeah franchise some, somewhat somewhat but you uh you have a stunning review of uh the origins of uh, snake eyes oh yes i really do you know my podcast go check it out guys and um you said uh you've only fallen asleep during one other movie oh yeah one other movie this was hard to hard to watch man (laughs) it was hard to to watch (laughs) yo and only one movie i slept through was called the order by heath ledger he was a priest and uh, the snake eyes movie man i was like (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you stomach through yeah, yeah i just did man it's like ugh, okay and it's it's a shame and i don't know if if it's if it's just that the fans of this now really don't want new takes on this you know because now there's a warren ellis uh written, written or overseen um, obviously it's called resolute quite and a few people like this one. oh yeah I, I love this one man yeah. this is what it should should have been and now what year do you think that was was that 2000 oh we that's 2011 10 or 11 maybe maybe 10 okay yep yep I, I, I think it might be that um but that's a gi joe movie that's worth watching see and and it's it's interesting that 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 would be so hard to do now I know it's more serious. It's more violent. Oh, of course, it's violent. Yeah, but it's the military, though. Right. So that's where that's I'm kind reality. of curious, like why they've just never said, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's just go full blown. Let's, you know, a film on on a on, <laughs> on a level of like Hurt Locker or or you know something where you could show them, you know, cycling back, cycling in and out of their tours. Two thousand nine. I was on one. Two thousand nine. Okay. Yeah, so. so that's. That's after the live actions as well start, right? I think so. One of the first one. At least the first, yeah. Yeah, the first one. So, I mean, you know, it's it's definitely it's definitely a franchise they keep coming back to, and we keep seeing them uh, try and revitalize. But really now, it seems like these. Uh, if you want to, oh yeah, grab Tomax and Z- and or Zaymont, the whichever. twins, baby, the twins. You know, these. Interestingly enough, so these start coming out in 2020. If I'm not mistaken, yes, 2020. Partially, if I, I think, probably inspired by those uh, Star Wars vintage uh, collections. Releases. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, they had a lot, and that's that same basic what the size. Black series. I remember those. Uh, those were clean. Those yeah, were nice. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, uh, having met Sergeant Slaughter, I had to, uh, I had to uh, get the figure here. This is. Uh, the Sarge before he uh, started cutting promos uh, <laughs> as an Iraqi sympathizer. Um, I just think it's hilarious. He 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 let us know when we talked to him uh, at Joe Lana. He said that when when he first talked to Vince McMahon about being uh, a cartoon character, he's uh-huh, like, yeah. I'm having an opportunity to be immortalized here. I'm going to get an action figure. I'm going to be in a cartoon. Vince wasn't Vince wasn't too thrilled. But then again, Vince needs to stop because back in the 80s, they had a cartoon. 
Oh, they they had toys, and toys for the figures. wrestlers. Oh yeah. Day. So and why? I I think he just felt he owned this. Oh, so I just thought of the character. And the thing is, he had come up with this character on his own before he came to the WWF okay. and became up for right, 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 right. So he had his own lawyer have to back him up in the office with Vince who apparently was a collegiate wrestler. I mean, a, a legitimate, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> grapple moves wrestler. <laughs> Guess some things got a little heated. The funny thing with the finger, the extended finger in the face, is that that I, <laughs> Sergeant says that he got one of those from Vince right up in his face. Oh, and the lawyer I can like, believe that. I believe that. He shut it right down. I believe that. <laughs> so it's good to uh, have all your ducks in a row, all your proof of creation before the big guys come and try and take it over it's because he was able to keep that and keep that property yeah. so to speak and uh took it over to the cartoon show got to train train uh, my fictional heroes Yo, and, yeah and then come back to the real world and wrestle in wrestlemania I uh, mean, he, he had it man he was he was the hotness <laughs> back in the day he, he had it going on man he did now 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 <laughs> The Iraqi sympathizer angle was hilarious, but also probably not the best. It was not the best move. move. Not if he wanted to stay uh, one of the the Joes. Right. It was not the best move, <laughs> man. But uh, at the same time, pr- pretty classic for uh, kayfabe and uh, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the heel, the baby face. <laughs> so we're gonna have Sarge sit this the rest of this out here. But meanwhile, um, when I I talked to Buddy. Uh, at the Joe Lana, and we were trying to say, well, what, you know, the Joe figures these these are obviously for adults. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, kids can get these as well. We we're talking about the price points on these things. So, what was it again in '64? If you were to buy one of the uh, originals of these, they're probably they're around four, two dollars, two dollars, wasn't it? Two dollars. And we were trying to figure out, you know, inflation and whatnot, what that would be now, but. It'd be this price. I mean, I, I mean, I would almost wonder. That's what I'm trying to figure out because when when we were kids and we were buying these, these were apparently about two dollars. Two dollars, yeah. Um, Between I, two or three. My head is still gonna go upwards of five, four, four maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm like the late '80s or something. I don't know if some of these figures were different prices. One ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, and and just to th- so, um, I just I don't think. I don't think the inflation, I don't think that translates to 25. I could be wrong. Mm, yeah. That's quite a jump. So the the price point isn't very uh, kid-friendly. No, it is not. Um, and and honestly, going through the accessories for, for Sergeant here, he he has clips for the gun. Like his, right. his gun has clips. He's got like eight sets of hands. Like <laughs> he's got sunglasses that come off, and he never took off his sunglasses <laughs> except when he Yo, wrestled. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this about for both products, um, GI Joe and Transforming. Articulation is outstanding. Yeah, the new the, the new figures, the classifieds, the tar, the articulation is outstanding. It's almost, it's almost too good. I mean, yeah, like, man. shoot, man, look at look how yeah. loose it is. I mean, yeah, the feet. The, the shins, the kneecaps. I mean, it's 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 clean. That's nice. So we we're trying to figure out where, you know, Buddy was asking, well, where do you see some of this stuff going? And it's very hard for me. I, I try not to be. I don't, I'm not super cynical. I don't like being the old man, you know, uh-huh. shouting to get off my yard kind of thing. I, 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 I want to think that there's some room for some of this kinds of stuff for, for new generations. But I just don't know if that's where their interest lies. Is we, he was he was talking up these uh, final faction figures, and they're about that three point seven five uh, yeah, range. Close. They're a little bit thicker, you know. They're 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 not as roided out as the '90s started getting with the Star Wars figures oh, and right. the GI Joes yeah. and stuff. But they're they're a little they're a little on the uh, more rip side here, I think. But what's kind of neat about these is each figure comes with a little scan and watch. So they've got the cartoons. They've got the name, you know, the code named characters. They've got the factions. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say they are fighting bugs. I think we're back to the, back to the bugs. we're back to the starship troopers. Yep, but you know, it, it's kind of neat to see them encourage like, oh, get this weapons pack for this character, or yeah. get you know, watch the back uh, cartoon here for that. Some of that's pretty neat. I, I just don't, I still just don't see it quite taking off. Yeah, and and again, post. You know, it's 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 very interesting. If I'm not mistaken, now was it 
the first, I'm trying to think when it came out, September, it was the weekend of September, man. Of what? There was an anniversary, it's a, a G, uh, an important G.I. Joe anniversary, and it's on, I want to say, September 11th, or maybe it's the 12th, or it's it's that weekend, so it's always around that weekend, because that's when the shows are in Atlanta. So, I, I, I mean, I find it interesting for many reasons, but in a dark way, too, growing up, hearing about an international terrorist organization, it didn't mean anything to me. It was because they were taking over amusement parks and barbecue restaurants. Right. And it didn't make no sense whatsoever. I, and if I'm not mistaken, I think the only time Cobra actually succeeds in taking anything over is Springfield, Illinois. Yes, it's, it's just the town, the town yeah. little, little town in America. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if they do that in the comic or not. I think they do because I remember seeing the small town where they're fighting and all that. And I believe, in honor of that, the mayor, the actual mayor of, <laughs> I think he gave him the keys to the city or gave him recognition, <laughs> Cobra Commander. Um, but but in reality, you know, we, we start seeing, okay, these are the effects of terrorism. Okay, you know, like, yeah. now we know, you know, there's no... There's no beheading videos in G.I. Joe comics. Oh, no, no, no. There's no, that. never anything as rough as the real world. There's no world. suicide bomber or no, nothing yeah, like that. Yeah. No. But, you know, post those things, it's just going to be very difficult to sell this to kids anymore. I think, yeah. it, you know, and it, it, it really, it either has to be aliens, robots, or lay off the war theme. And the reason why Transformers work so well and probably still continues to work so well no matter how many terrible live action movies they put out oh, right <laughs> just not seem to destroy that property <laughs> no it cannot destroy the robots i mean i'm not gonna lie uh, i kind of tapped out after the second one but uh the the sequence on cybertron the in, bumblebee in bumblebee, bumblebee right that's the movie i want to see and if you're not going to give me that one i don't really care too much but yeah i mean when i saw you know what? This is gonna be on a, when we talk about Trump. I'm gonna For go sure. with that. But that that Cybertron scene that, that that's brought my childhood all back over again. But now you're safe because it's not only aliens; it's robot aliens. Right. There's no souls here. We don't got to worry about. No, you blow them up, you blow them up, put them back together again. Yeah, just piece them back together that's again. <laughs> I think uh, in the comics, there's a. Uh, a freelance peacekeeping agent that shows up and just annihilates Bumblebee, just blows him to hell, just <laughs> destroys him. <laughs> oh man, that's great! Yeah, but he gets renewed. I think it was a uh, Retgar. Retgar, that's who I meant. Retgar is the one that puts Bumblebee back we'll, together. We'll be stupid. <laughs> be stupid. And somehow, <laughs> as a kid, I thought getting Don Johnson in the GI Joe movie was just. Oh, As such a wow! Oh, you know that was, that was that was that was my parents had to take this serious. Now they liked Miami Vice. They have to watch this with me now. It's got Sergeant Slaughter. I don't know what that means, but he's a real person, so it's right. exciting. You were getting voice actors that people knew, and then Transformers has to come along and get Orson Welles, Leonard Th- Nimoy, and that was his last performance. All the, <laughs> Citizen Kane's last performance, dude. We said they recycle those voice actors sometime in the GI Joe and Transformers. You know. Yeah. Like you said you like Cobra Commander voice actor. Yes. He also was Starscream. Correct. Yeah. And Chris Lada. Uh, I say with yeah. Lada. Yeah. Lada. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I want to say he was going to be the voice of Mo on The Simpsons. Right. Uh, and then I think he passed away before that. Mm, okay. So, um, but also to connect these here in the end, I believe there's a Transformers episode. Yeah. So the connection, you know, both properties are Hasbro, right? So the connection with Transforming G.I. Joe, they also did it in the comic books, remember? Yeah. G.I. Joe versus Transformers. Oh, yeah. But four in, issue minis. Yeah, yeah. No. Four, but in the cartoon, there's a connection here. So there was an episode. Um, it's season it was season three. and Like episode 20. It, 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 it was something. It was, it, was deep, it was a higher number. It was a higher number. So in that episode, R.C. Wow, hold on. R.C. Rodimus. Springer and Ultra Magnus. He's got to get them all in there. there. There was four of them. I got to get them in there. There was four of them. So they, they, um, some gangster, one of their bodies. Like a, like an ex-terrorist oh, or something? No, no, it was a gangster. Oh, okay. Oh, so he, this is well, the connection. The connection. Right? So he's a gangster, right? And he, he found their bodies and he transferred their bodies into this these um these um clone bodies. But the connection is this. He need help. 
the uh, gangster need help, but you know who he goes to? Uh-uh. He goes to Cobra Commander, but he goes by the name of Snake. <laughs> Old Snake. Old Snake. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. I'm like, I'm like, wow, really? I'm like, Old Snake. So I think it was the, remember the Serpentor um, technology they brought him? Uh, uh, he got all the DNA and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I think it was the same technology where it was advanced uh, okay, yeah. in this episode. Yeah. So this is the future. Yeah. So that has to connect, right? Interesting. So he's, he's trying to hide his uh, blue uniform blue with uniform like a trench coat a, 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 or something. He's like a bum. He just, he's just like a straight bum. <laughs> he screams Cobra, he's, but he's, can't he's, get he's, it out. He's a like, Cobra. <laughs> That's great. He's a Cobra. <laughs> See, I mean, even in the cartoons, they knew. Let's try and let's try and meld these together. Let, Yo. <laughs> Michael Bay just didn't get the message. Oh, he, he did that all, yeah. man. But that was a cool episode, man. That is fun. It was so <laughs> that's the TV series. Now, after the '94 comics canceled and all this, you you're gonna get several re- iterations of GI Joe comics, and right. most of them do connect. I mean, yeah. most of them are written by Larry Hama still. Yeah, um, I know. Did Chuck Dixon throw some too? Chuck Dixon has a, a run. Yeah, I want to say um, Devil's Do. Maybe Joe Casey does some. Okay. Now, I'm I know, not sure, I think but there's Chuck also Dixon did some of the Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow stuff. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? I remember seeing the yeah the mini. Yeah. And now, IDW had the rights for most of these Hasbro properties. Yeah. And one of the last fun ones that they put out is this Saturday Morning Adventures. So, so, well, this style really seems to to get people's attention because it's very much based from the cartoon on the cartoon. Yeah. 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 You're, you're getting the same kinds of blue lasers in the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They had to create the bats because, like I was saying, robots are okay to blow up and right. kill. Um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun in here. It, it, but they don't have the the licensing anymore. No, they so don't. after many many years of it, went from Marvel to I want to say Devil's Do. Devil's Do. Image for a second image. or two, or yeah, it was an right imprint there. there with Devil's Do. Yeah, and then they. IDW, IDW got had it for a while, you know, a good had, while. Yeah, most of the Hasbro properties they had them for a while. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. Um, you know, they're they're the future of GI Joe. I don't want to say is in question because uh, us old heads are always going to love it, and there's collectors, and and we bring in the young because you know they convert the they convert their children. <laughs> That's right. So you know, for the old head, you know, it's just a nostalgic feeling to you know go back and just because we were talking about the episodes and like wow, yeah. And and like I said, some of the episode was corn. I can say some were corny. Yeah. As 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 an adult, you look at it as a kid, you think it's awesome, amazing. <laughs> so right. <laughs> so I mean, and some of that stuff was serious, man. So, I mean, you you dealt with um, cloning, mind swap. You know, it was just science fiction was part of it too. yeah well, who who else dna is in Sepentor? i forget genghis khan genghis khan is like uh, napoleon napoleon is yeah. in there somewhere most of the dictators <laughs> and will, will be conquerors of you know, the world you know funnily enough i don't think they had hitler in there i'm glad they didn't <laughs> It's not like the others are okay. Well, hey, man. It's just enough time is bad. Yeah, I already had enough enough as is. I Most mean, of us are related to Genghis Khan. That's, that's right. how bad the dude was. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, really? Uh, uh, then, 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 man, speaking of the episode, the way they were doing it, like they had mist around the body, like like ghosts. You remember that? No. Oh, good, man. <laughs> no, so it I was, do it not. Was just, it was just like, you can't, it was just weird, man. I, I remember I remember the, the Dick Enterprises ones and I remember there being a, a bat or one of the robots that was like they had to decommission it then they are bringing it back online they are giving it extra abilities and it was just slapstick and silly yeah. and it was being goofy and then I remember the commercial cartoons that you know the they kind of kept that tradition still going into the late 80s, early 90s, I think. And they had the Python. Uh, what was it again? The Not Python Force. I just Tiger Force. Not Tiger Force. I know, it was Tiger Force. And then the Python and, uh, was the Cobra doing it to the Joe. Yeah. So he, he just stretches out a giant snake across this scanner. <laughs> and it scans the snake. And then, boom, they're all go. on the vehicles. I wish that that would be so cool. <laughs> that was different in the DIC. Um cartoon it was, it was the commercials for the, commercial the toys for the toy, the but the cartoon was different yeah well they might have been kind of 
Well, they weren't probably doing that in the comics, were they? I don't think so. It really was just a, a, a gimmick to repaint what they already had and resell Sell it, it, repackage yeah. it. That's it. Yeah, which, I mean, some of them look really cool, so <laughs> I can't knock it too much. But you know, the, the, the best we probably have is occasionally getting some, some more serious cartoons like Resolute. Uh, Resolute, yeah. yeah. I think so, too. Um, I'm going to get me wrong. The other cartoon, like Renegade, was not bad. Yeah. They, you know, they, they, they did that. Not too long ago, in 2011, I think. Yeah, I think it was around there. Yeah, yeah Renegade wasn't bad. Cause it, it it had a good story. Yeah. And once you look at it, once you look at it, because you had GI Joe was accused of something they didn't do. They were fugitives. They want to run. Who doesn't like that? Right. You know. So. Yeah, you got to eventually make the team the ones that are. You know, yeah. Yeah. So Cobra was in embedded in America. A lot of things. There was this corporation underneath it all. They are a terrorist organization. Right. Yeah. See that how corporations are bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's that's why it's so funny to me that in the '80s they said use car salesmen because I yeah. mean at that time it was all about like oil and wars right, and the things right. that were going on. So what does that kind of trickle down to? But the guy who's selling secondhand you know vehicles gas guzzlers and whatnot like he's you know it it just cracks me up that that's his, supposed to be his origins yeah but renegade was good yeah i give it that it was good i mean as far as i'm being nostalgic about the 80s stuff that that was not a bad series at mm-hmm. all but i don't know how the toy line did though i don't know yeah that's, see, i don't know and 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 Judging by how many of them are like anniversary this, anniversary that, yeah. it shows that after a point, they were just they were just putting these back. Like these are technically you could say, oh, this is a vintage recreation. They're just bigger. They're you know deep. But I I think when they put out like the animation ver from the season, you know, from the first series, like we were talking about, like the blue suits or yeah, the, the different suits too, that yeah. are specific to just like a couple episodes. Yeah. They're going to put it out now. Cause yeah, someone's going to someone's gonna see it. They're going to want it. They yeah. want to want it. You exactly. Know, collectors want it. Yeah. And, and that's really what it's kind of become more of is it's, it's the older market, the collectors. And so now it'll be interesting to kind of get into how, so that all changed the, the, just the landscape of, of, toys and advertising and and synergy of marketing the comics the cartoons the figures and all this and it just brings and we talk about how star wars kind of gets the ball rolling gi joe really takes that torch yeah they really did and then they ran with it too and you just (laughs) see it's an near infinite amount i mean we couldn't we couldn't even list all of the stuff that came out as a result of this of course the next one we'll be talking about is transformers but i mean it's it's everything from silver hawks to uh, visionaries. Should, I was gonna say visionaries as and a humanoids. humanoids. I mean, that, that's a whole nother topic in itself. And it really just opens up a gate. I mean, Saturday mornings from for like a decade or more mm-hmm. were just geared towards. And, and I noticed even as a kid, I'm like, wait, Rambo, Rambo cartoons and toys. This is a rated R movie. Yeah, RoboCop. Wait a minute. <laughs> you got a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. I mean, it's just and so it just kind of shows you, like there were no boundaries, and then all of a sudden it just disappears. Like so that they they cracked down on that. It really did. <laughs> we just got the golden years of it. Yes, we did. I mean, I'm happy we did. <laughs> <laughs> we were willing uh, participants <laughs> in, in that. <laughs> right, <laughs> but. But yeah, no, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna be excited to talk to a few uh, different creators in the future and uh, putting some things together, showing some of the people that went into. You well, know, we discussed Larry Hama uh-huh. for the Transformers. Larry Hama would be uh, Bob Budiansky. Budiansky, because he is the one who had was tasked by Marvel. Okay, we've got this. You got this. You're gonna have to give up these names and figure make the origins out. and this right here. Figure it out. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> Just figure it out. And what Jim Shooter said, you're going <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun exploring all of that. We're going to be, uh, I'm going to be putting up some of the walkthroughs of the shows. Some of the people we've uh, t- gotten to talk to so far with uh, involved with these properties, but definitely a lot more in the future. Um, so we hope you enjoyed this. Once again, I'm Dakota. This is. I'm Amos from Just Being Amos Podcast, <laughs> and we will see you next time. Oh, Slipper, you'll be joining us soon.